3 i Atlas has changed course and it's headed right to Jupiter. Can that be a coincidence? And it did that while it was in perihelion, hidden from Earth, hidden from our sight. Extraordinary new anomaly of interstellar object 3i Atlas and we already have 12. This is number 13 guys, right after NASA has released the high rise images that everyone was waiting for. So guys, it's getting interesting. 3i Atlas keeps us busy with more mysteries. So stay with me in this video because I want you to imagine just as a thought experiment that the interstellar object 3i Atlas is not a natural comet. Because if we imagine that other possibility, natural, not natural as well, it helps us understand the mysteries of this object. So guys, we don't want to prove that this is alien and we don't think it's alien, but we want to look at the possibility because that possibility definitely exists. So if it's not a natural comet and it shows a lot of signs of unnatural comets, but maybe we just don't know enough about comets. Maybe this is a different type of natural comet. But Let's say it's a mothership designed to deliver technological devices to Jupiter because that's where it, its trajectory could lead it to. And you would probably ask why Jupiter? Why would an interstellar object go to Jupiter? It's the easiest giant target to hit in the solar system. It's the biggest planet. It's huge. It has an enormous gravitational reach, hill radius, roughly 53 million kilometer. Any object that's passing nearby is strongly influenced by Jupiter's gravity. So for a long traveling interstellar probe, Jupiter is the biggest and most obvious landmark in the solar system. So even if 3i Atlas is just a comet, this is interesting because this is where spaceship enterprise might be headed, guys. Jupiter is extremely interesting for science and technology. So if an advanced civilization wanted to investigate or seed our solar system with devices, Jupiter is the top priority because it's the most massive planet. It's 318 times the Earth. Makes it scientifically very valuable. It has this powerful magnetic field, the strongest of all of the planets in our solar system. And it has over 90 known moons. Some of them, we have named them Europa, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto. Um, they may even have surface oceans. So it's like a mini solar system. Moons, strong gravity, complex magnetic environment, perfect research site. For an alien mission, guys, Jupiter is like the central station of our solar system. So another reason is that I think it's it's the best spot is Jupiter. Jupiter's Lagrange points are perfect parking spots for probes. Inside Jupiter's Hill sphere are special gravitational sweet spots, as we call them, called L1 and L2. And at these points, a device can stay stable with almost no fuel. It gets a perfect vantage point. It can monitor Jupiter, the Sun, and interplanetary space. So for an interstellar mothership, a Captain Kirk, these points are ideal development locations. Or for Captain Future, when I was a kid, I was so in love with Captain Future. And I recently found out that he died in the last episode. I don't even remember that. So another thing is, Jupiter is very visible. Jupiter would have been visible to its senders billions of years ago. And that's the key point that Harvard scientists Avi Loeb makes. Aliens who launch the object, if 3i Atlas, for example, is this alien, space junk, spaceship, whatever, they may have done so millions or billions of years earlier. Back then, Earth 
Earth is intelligent, life did not even exist, but Jupiter already existed and it was visible from very far away. So if this mission was sent such a long time ago, the logical target wouldn't be the humans, it would be Jupiter, the most prominent feature in our system. That's why they have left us alone so far. That's why 3i Atlas didn't, didn't send its probes towards Earth, right? So, aliens say, like we do, we want to send stuff or we do send stuff to other planets in our solar system. But if some alien nation said, well, let's send some junk down in space and see what happens, if they have the technology and I'm sure there's some out there that do. So Mothership designed to deliver technological devices to Jupiter in a way that we do too. So if that were the case, where exactly would such a Mothership have to arrive? So to plant devices around Jupiter, 3i Atlas would need to enter Jupiter's hill radius. This is the region around a planet where the planet's gravity becomes stronger than the sun's gravity. So that allows sp small spacecraft or satellites to stay in stable orbits without being torn away by the sun. So inside this hill sphere are also Jupiter's L1 and L2 Lagrange points the ideal places for artificial satellites because they require almost no fuel to maintain their position. We can calculate Jupiter's hill radius when we use the distance between Jupiter and the Sun, the mass of Jupiter and the mass of the Sun. Next year, on March 16th, 2026, Jupiter will be 783.8 million kilometers away from the Sun. And now we're plugging the numbers into the equation. Jupiter's hill radius is 53.502 million kilometers. So where will 3i Atlas pass? That's the interesting point. NASA's JPL Horizon System calculates the path of 3i Atlas, they're using observations from roughly 230 observatories, including the data that we now have about its recent non-gravitational acceleration near perihelion, the closest point to the sun. The non-gravitational acceleration, another of these anomalies. I've talked about it in the past. If you're interested in that, check out my older videos. So according to the calculations on March 16th next year, 3i Atlas will pass at a distance of 53.445 million kilometers from Jupiter. Is that a coincidence that it's nearly identical? to Jupiter's hill radius of 53.502 million kilometers, matching it within the tiny margin of 0.06 kilo million kilometers. This is a tiny margin if you s s look at the whole number. This is an extraordinary coincidence. Extraordinary. That's number 13, but that's not all guys. Why is this coincidence so strange? We need to talk about this a little, little, little more because the non-gravitational acceleration that was detected during the month when Atlas passed perihelion, it shifted its trajectory. It has shifted. And Avi Loeb was suspecting it. He said, if this is something alien, it might change trajectory when we cannot see it. It has shifted its trajectory exactly by the right amount to adjust the closest approach distance by 0 0.1 million kilometers. That is just enough so that it would meet the hill radius. Without this small push, interstellar object 3i Atlas would miss 
the edge of the hill sphere. Would definitely miss. So guys, really, I'm open-minded with this. I don't want to push you in one direction or the other. But it's definitely fascinating to look at this because it did change trajectory in perihelion and that trajectory change means something. So is this a coincidence that it meets this hill radius? Could have gone anywhere. Let me know in the comments if you think that this is strange. So it looks like the acceleration was finely tuned to hit the hill radius exactly. So if three eye atlas were artificial, it could have used small thrusters to slightly adjust its path near perihelion. It did change the path. Whatever did make that change, it's the optimal time for a maneuver because the, a spacecraft can use the sun's gravity for a gravitational assist. And importantly, Atlas was behind the sun during perihelion, meaning the Earth's telescopes could not observe what it was doing. And the thing is, Avila predicted this. No, not predicted, but he said if it was to change trajectory, it would do it in perihelion. And it did. It did not do it after, before, or where we could see it. So that's strange. It is strange, guys. Also, many post-perihelion images now show multiple jets. I've reported about this. Multiple jets that are coming out of interstellar object 3i Atlas. And we've talked about this. These jets could hypothetically act like small thrusters. So we do not know whether Atlas merely performed a small course correction or also released devices near perihelion. Maybe it did release devices towards Earth. Let's talk about this coincidence again. I like statistics. I like math. I like looking at these formulas. What's the likelihood of that? I've spent years and years calculating stuff like this. So being within 0 0.06 out of 53.5 million kilometers is a one in 1,000 coincidence. So considering Jupiter's entire orbital diameter, the coincidence is one in 26,000. Hmm. That's really a coincidence, right? So guys, that's why. If Atlas releases devices near Jupiter, any object, that it would deploy must fire their engines to slow down because Atlas will be moving at 65.9 kilometers per second relative to Jupiter. At the hill radius distance, Jupiter's escape velocity is only 2.2 kilometers per second. So a small spacecraft could break and enter a bound orbit. So if we see new unexplained satellites appear around Jupiter after March 16th, 2026, we could detect them. NASA's Juno spacecraft or other orbiters could detect them if they're not in lockdown at the time. Right? So if these satellites are technological and are not ours, this would suggest Jupiter is of interest to an extraterrestrial civilization. What's the flip side? If no devices appear around Earth, it might mean we are not the target of 3i Atlas. Avi Loeb says it would be like going to a party where no one, nobody wants to dance with us. 
What we need to consider and what Avi Loeb is also saying, please keep that in mind, most stars formed long before our sun was formed. So an object like 3i Atlas moving slowly through the galaxy could take a billion years to reach our solar system. So if we someday send down our own interstellar probes, we would not want other civilizations to dismiss them as, ah, that's just a comet, right? Because their surfaces picked up dust and ice during the long journey. Interesting point, right? Guys, it's, it's interesting. It's fascinating. Let me know what you think in the comment. Click here in the end screen, the playlist of 3i Atlas, where I explain everything. It's such an interesting topic to dive in. We can learn so much about comets and interstellar objects, maybe about spaceships. Who knows, guys? It's definitely fascinating. If you want to support the channel, buy me a coffee. It's down. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you for everyone who's doing this. Hype, like, and subscribe. And if you're new here, please stay in a second. Click here. And if you're old here, also click here. Interesting new topics. I see you in a second.